So we're at over 80%. And there's three things that I want to discuss in today's episode. Number one, the DA performance and what they are hiding in real numbers. Number two, the EFF and this question of whether Julius Malema should resign or not and step aside and allow for new people. Number three, what options President Ramaphosa has for himself. So let's dive into the first topic. The Democratic Alliance has been walking around this venue bragging and boasting and saying, we told you we got more black voters, more black voters, absolute number, more. Politics is a numbers game, right? So when we're talking numbers, the best place to look is absolute numbers. So here are the numbers, and I want to see if you spot a trend. This is why I'm a dissector. I I want you to stay with me now. 2014, the DA had 4.1 million votes. 4.1 4.1 million. 2019, they had 3.6 million votes. We're at 80%. The projection is that they're going to be at 2.9 million votes or 3 million votes. What does that mean? That means that the Democratic Alliance is not actually growing. John Steinhazen told a lie when he said he got more black voters than Musi Maimane because when we talk about more, we're talking about absolute numbers. And when you're looking at absolute numbers, the DA has been in decline. They have lost uh, in the last election 700,000 voters. Voters. And if you factor in that they may have gotten back some of the hardcore far right guys from the Freedom Front Plus, this doesn't explain their low performance in numbers. So all day, the DA guys have been coming to me saying, I know you were wrong, you were wrong. And to a degree, I was. And I admit that. But the DA is shrinking in size. These numbers don't lie. These numbers are very clear. So let's not allow them to massage by focusing on the percentage number because the percentage number relates to seats. But when we're talking about support, how many people do you actually have physically? They have less people physically. Let's not get that twisted. They're actually not doing better, right? And the reasons why they're not doing better are the same reasons that have always applied. Number one, John Steinhazen is an arrogant leader who doesn't have charm and charisma. He doesn't have a message that resonates with South Africa. That remains true. The perception that they are anti-black people remains true. There's been a massive exodus of black leaders. People have not forgotten that. And even right now, as people are having conversations on social media, they're asking other black people if they're the ones who voted for the DA. No, it wasn't. There's a large constituency of white people and also people in the Western Cape who were very concerned about losing the province, who showed up to vote for the DA, responding to that sort of But in absolute numbers, 3.6 million, which is what Musi Maimane had, is more than 2.9 million. That's, that's just the numbers, right? So. They still have to do a reckoning with that and to actually recognize that they actually shrunk in spaces like Soweto, Tembisa, Soshanguve. They're not doing well in Dipsloot. And those are predominantly black areas. So let's actually just park that and understand that there's another story that needs to be told here and another examination. If you don't ask them about absolute numbers, other analysts, you're not doing your full job. Let's move. Let's move. People often say, hey, Mighty Jamie is an EFF analyst. So let me do some EFF analysis. I'm not an EFF analyst. Sometimes they're ahead. Sometimes they're behind. Right now, they're behind. They took a big, big beating in Wazulu Natal. EFF had 360,000 votes last time in Wazulu Natal. Now they are on 52,000. They may end up on about 65,000. So they lost 300,000 votes in Wazulu Natal. Where did those votes go? They went to the bad boy of the election, the tsunami of this election, the chess grandmaster himself, the man who laughs while he's gathering you. They, th- that's where the votes went. You know that. I know that. Everybody knows that. It's not a secret. So some of those cracks were evident early on. So right now, EFF is sitting on one point, uh, 1.1. 1. 1. As, this, as these things go, they're going to end up on about 1.4. Uh, in total, maybe 1.3 if if it doesn't turn, but 1.16, they're going to end up at about 1.4. So they were on 1.88 last time. So 300,000 gone from um from Wazulu Natal. You can see that's 1.8. You go down, fam. That's that's the way this thing works. So 
the, the narrative that has been peddled is that, you know, um, Julius Malema was flippant in discussing a very serious issue about immigration, which affects people. Immigration, let's not get it twisted, is a very big issue. It's a very tenacious issue. People have strong feelings about it. And also, there is a problem. The immigration population has gone up, particularly from Zimbabwe, from Mozambique, as a result of the conditions in those countries. That is a real problem. And people who live in townships, especially in Gauteng, contest for resources and experience sometimes negative encounters with foreign nationals. Those things really happen. And so the argument that Julius Malema was too flippant and his open border policy is the reason why the EFF lost, let's examine that. Let's unpack that. There are two nationalist parties which are strong on immigration in terms of like they want to do mass deportation on day one. Patriotic Alliance as well as Action SA. Patriotic Alliance grew in two provinces. One, the Western Cape and two, the Northern Cape. In fact, in the Western Cape, they managed to get 147,000 votes there and 34,180 in the Northern Cape. These are predominantly colored communities. These are predominantly colored communities. Even though Gaten McKenzie was saying Abahambe, he was also saying that colored people are losing out in South Africa, that colored people have been treated as second-class citizens in, the, in, in South Africa. Some of that argument is true because people feel left out of certain things. Some of that argument is misleading because if you look at the unemployment data, the black community is more unemployed as a percentage than the colored community. And you can look at the stat essay data, it reflects that. But there are real issues that sometimes people feel marginalized. And in communities where there are large colored communities and there's lots of violent crime and gang crime, people do feel left out. It's a real feeling. He did play that message to his benefit, right? So the Colored nationalism is more of a reason why Gayton McKenzie is doing well in this election than any other reason. When you look at the votes that the Patriotic Alliance got in Gauteng, these votes don't indicate that he benefited from being ultra-nationalist or, or, or being xenophobic. He got 59,000 votes there. If you look at Action SA, how many votes did they get in Gauteng? 100,000. These are not the votes that were taken from the EFF. These are not really the votes because if the EFF was losing hundreds of thousands of votes, maybe millions of votes because they said something that was progressive about, uh, you know, uh, pan-Africanism, those votes would go to somebody. The votes didn't go to anybody. So how can we make that conclusion? I don't think that's a fair conclusion to make. I don't think it's a reasonable conclusion to make. So I think that the EFF was heavily affected in Gauteng and also in Wazulu Natal by um, Mkonto Wesizo, even in Pumalanga. Mkonto Wesizwe guys came in and took everybody's lunch. Originally, I didn't think that they would take the EFF's lunch. I was wrong. I thought that the Fanon people, the people of Fanon, the people of, uh, what's this, this guy's name? Ami Claire Cabral, the people of Walter Rodney, they're not going to just go to Zuma because some of the things in the MK party did not have an ideological framework in the way that the EFF people often speak in an ideological framework, right? So I was wrong. I was wrong. There are some people who voted for the EFF initially as a protest vote to the ANC. When Zuma gave them a stronger protest vote, they went there. Some people saw EFF hanging out with Zuma and they developed favorable feelings to Zuma. So they went to Zuma. Some people were really pissed by the way Zuma was treated. And regardless of EFF or whatever other party, they were going to back him because they felt that how Ramaphosa treated Cyril, uh, Jacob Zuma was unfair and wrong. Point blank, pow, pow. That's what happened. Now, the question then becomes, should Julius Malema resign? I think it's, prim it's premature to make that request. I think that the dynamics of MK change a lot of things. I think it's good to have a conversation. The EFF has to have a serious conversation because one of the things I thought that they would do in this election was march to Vodacom or march to cliques or do something dramatic, you know, something that the EFF is known for. They show their voters that they're fighting you know, they're fighters. You've got to fight. You know, <laughs> you're fighters. You've got to fight. I thought they were going to fight. They didn't fight. You know, some people felt that the thing was lacking energy. Um, and maybe they over-dedicated resources to um, Wazulu Natal when they should have just let it go. But remember, MK came when they'd already planned for this rally. They'd already planned all of those resources. So some of those resources then became wasted resources. I think it's premature for us to say, for anybody to say Julius Malema must resign from the EFF. From the EFF perspective, 
Julius Malema is still their strongest, most popular, and most effective po politician. From the EFF perspective, Julius Malema is still their strongest, most popular, and most effective politician. I said that, and I think it's true. Why? We all know that he's the most popular. I don't think that the EFF remains the same brand without Julius Malema. You may think that these things don't matter, but look at what just happened with MK. People were like, no, the ANC is bigger than Zuma. Hey, Zuma, Zuma, Zuma. Go on, Zuma. Then Zuma came back like the undertaker. And they couldn't deal. So a brand name does affect a political party. A brand name does affect a political party. But not only has he got that brand recognition, Julius Malema is a disciplinarian in a way that he can keep contesting issues together, contesting uh, ideologies together in a way that other people cannot realistically do. And as a result of that, you need a strong leader at the top of an organization which is growing, which has got uh, strong personalities. And if you bring other people, I'm afraid that some of that stuff will not hold. Some of that. So I, I recognize that there are other leaders in the EFF who have a lot of skill sets. For instance, Mbuisen Lozi has a lot of skill sets. He is one of their best communicators. He is also one of their best organizers. Those things are true. But I don't think that he's ready for all of the things that are required for you to preside over a large organization such as the EFF. I think that he may have an opportunity and Floyd Chivambu may also have an opportunity. I'm skipping the line. In fact, probably Floyd will do it before Mbuiseni does. And it's not my decision. It's the EFF's decision. Contrary to what you may think, I'm not an MK analyst. I'm not an EFF analyst. I'm not a member of any of those parties. I just tell you what I think. And if you think I'm correct, we can have a conversation. If you think I'm wrong, we can have a conversation. So I don't actually know any of the dynamics in those things. I'm telling you from my observation point and my analytical point. So I think that it would be a mistake for the EFF to remove Julius Malema now. I think other things do need to be done. They need, they need to ask themselves, why did we get wiped out in Guazulu Natal like this? We thought our voters were loyal. So maybe more political education is required in Guazulu Natal. Maybe they need to send someone back there who actually can resuscitate that stuff. But also they may need to focus on the provinces where they were getting solid numbers, where they got significantly more than even Guazulu Natal. Look at their performance in Western Cape, 85,000 votes. Their performance in Northern Cape, 55,000 votes, considering how small it is. Northwest, 100,000 votes. That's impressive. Mpumalang, 135,000 votes. Limpopo, 130. So if I was doing three focus provinces, Limpopo, um, Pumalanga and um, Northwest. Sometimes focusing on provinces does have results. Ask Gaten McKenzie and the EFF can do that much better. You also focus on Gauteng. You fight there because you did well in Gauteng. And then you grow from that. And then you can do well. But Wazulantal may not be a base for you to spend all of that money on at this particular point. But I'm done with Julius Malema. I think that he should stay as the president of the EFF. He's very effective. He's also very effective in parliament. And many people are still tuning in for Julius Malema, not for anybody else. Don't underestimate the significance and power of a strong leader. So we've done the Julius thing. Let's talk about Mr. Ramaphosa now. These results are not good. There's no way to spin this thing. From 57 to 42, 15% gone, boom, vaiyo. They were saying all of these things about ANCs coming back. And by the way, one of the senior journalists Ridi Klabi was talking about a, part, a political party does not lose all of those votes in one election. Born and now. It's happened. So I think some of the people were saying it's impossible, it's impossible. They also need to reflect, just like I'm reflecting on some of my data. Anyway, will he resign? What's, what's likely to be happening now, and I've seen some reports and some preliminary suggestions that already people are trying to plot to remove him. They're already trying to plot to remove him. So if he, if he doesn't resign, he only may have a path to make a deal with DA. But once he's in there, how safe is he from his own party? Because now within your own party, people are saying you went to the party that we said was the enemy. You are now making John Stainazen who you told to shut up. Remember when Ramaphosa said, shut up, you Stainazen. Then now he's the leader. The ANC is not going to stomach that. But now, if he goes to try to make a deal with MK, MK doesn't want him there. I heard a rumor that uh, Jacob Zuma told him that he wants Julius Malema to be vice president. And he, he, he and Paul must be the president. Not told him, but told some people in the ANC that that was he wants for MK to work with them. Otherwise, they must go. 
I don't think it's necessarily true, but this is, you know, people leak all over. This thing is full of leaks, full of suggestions. This place, this facility. So if he makes a deal with MK or if the ANC tries to make a deal with MK, he's gone. If he tries to make a deal with the, a with the, with the, with the EFF, he's also gone. They don't want him there. So now you're, you're stuck between a, a hard place, hard place, and a hard place. How do you navigate that? Three stinas coming at your face. A billionaire. You know, a man with uncle is just chilling at a farm that you can go sell for $600,000 each or whatever many. Um, <laughs> come on, why would you? So look, I think that realistically now they may be planning to see what kind of a managed exit does he have from the national stage. That may be what, what, what they may be doing. But the markets have still not given their votes. The markets are going to speak on Monday. Whether the run goes, we're going to see. But the markets are going to speak on Monday. Because markets are closed right now. So you're not going to know <laughs> how nervous the rand is. <laughs> you're only going to know how nervous Mr. Rupert feels on Monday. Because he's holding a lot of the rand. So if Rupert goes, huh, the rand goes, huh. <laughs> you know the rand is very emotional. It's a <laughs> I've never seen a more emotional currency than the rand. Rand, one person sneezes in a city called Stellenbosch, the rand can just fall. <laughs> I wake up again, you know. <laughs> So we're still going to hear from the RAND. And these dynamics will continue to be at play. I'm going to keep trying to get information. Tomorrow, basically, I think it's going to be the last day of this thing because 82%, like, this is game over now. 82%, there's not, nothing's going to change here. Nothing's going to change here. People can start talking. These are the percentages. I mean, the numbers may change here and there, but people are going to have to start talking and see what they can do. That's realistically what's going to have to happen. So. That's my assessment from tonight. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think Ramaphosa is going to make a deal with DA? Get kicked out by the ANC for making a deal with the DA? Or make a deal, or, or the ANC is going to make a deal without him, with MK or EFF? Make the markets nervous. Right now, these discussions about coalitions, by the way, you know, I'm not discussing ideology and policy and stuff like that because some of those things are relevant, but they're not going to be determining factors at a particular point. Now we're entering the space of real politic. Business will be speaking. Currency will be speaking. Politicians will be speaking. Power does not reside in one place. It resides in many pockets. And as a result of that, you have to, to understand who the power brokers are and what they're asking for. There are probably negotiations already happening in Stellenbosch right now. The hand of Rupert was not obvious, but it, if you looked, it was obvious. You know, so there's a lot. There's a lot going on. But I'm curious, what do you think? Right now, we are all in a realm where we are waiting to see how the cookie crumbles, but at the same time, trying to get better information to understand what's going on. But thanks so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Let's get this content out there. And I'm so grateful, everybody that you gave me so much support in the previous video, 60,000 views or so, that the most I've ever had watched on this channel. So humbled, so grateful. Thank you. Till the next one.